Learning Yourself from Mr. Excel podcast, episode 2392. Oh no, Power Query does bankers rounding. Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel netcast. I'm Bill Jelen, a topic that we haven't talked about since 2009, but just recently uh, came up and I have a special guest today. I'm really excited. Uh, Excel MVP, uh, Celia Alves is here to talk about uh, how this problem recently was kind of uncovered and, and, and what we learned about Power Query that's pretty surprising. Hey, Celia, it's great to have you here today. Thank you, Bill, for inviting me. It's a pleasure, great pleasure to be here in your channel. Yeah. Thank you so much. So now, I don't know if everyone knows this, but the MVPs have this mailing list, right, that we can all discuss problems. And it's great, the kinds of things that, that came up there. And I knew I had to update this video uh, because of a conversation that you started uh, a few days ago uh, and the surprising revelation, at least surprising to me, about how Power Query rounds. It doesn't match what Excel uh, does. So tell me how this all started. What, what happened? Yeah, so I already was aware of Power Query, uh, different rounding modes available, and that, and the fact that the default mode, uh, rounding mode in Power Query, not matching Excel's rounding uh, mode or rounding behavior. Uh, and I was aware of that because of a blog post by Ken Pulse. And it, this post was written in 2014, and I was aware of that, and I've been cautious since I became aware. It made us think, both of us, that a lot of people are not aware of this situation. And so the purpose of this video is really to tell people about what Power Query is doing when rounding, and uh, so that people are aware and can make their choices correctly. Okay, so first, let's just cover the normal way to round, the way that Excel rounds and the way that you have taught people to round as, as a teacher. What's the rule? So let's say we have a number like uh, 2.3. That rounds to 2, two. and 2.7 to 3. three. But if we are rounding to the whole number, of course. Yes, yeah. okay, but then 2.5, right in the middle, dead even in the middle. The rule is... 2.5, the teacher says, rounds to three just because. It's a convention. Right. It's like that. That's, ex that's exactly <laughs> what I learned, right? So anything that 0. 0.5, yeah. if the last digit is five, you always round up. That that's, was yeah. the rule. But what is Power Query doing? Well, Power Query does, what Power Query does is if it is 3.5 rounds to four. As we expect. But if it is... 4.5, it rounds to 4 as well. <laughs> Which is not what Excel does, right? And that no. that is horrible. Now, on, when I saw your email, just in the back of my head, I was like, huh, I, I feel like I've seen this before. And when I went back and looked, it was a video that I did in 2009. That was, what, 12 years ago. Someone wrote in and they had this crazy thing. They called it ASTM-E29 rounding, where you always round towards the even number. And I had never heard of that uh, before that day. But back in 2009, I came up with a little formula that would do that using the mod and if and things like that. Let me show this um, because I went back and watched the video, you know, 12 years later just to see. And, and that's a very interesting video. It's amazing how you always have a, a video for every situation. <laughs> see, I've been around <laughs> so long, I have a video for about, everything. <laughs> after thousands of right. videos, there's yeah. always yeah. one to answer. Yeah. But it's funny, this video never got any traction, right? So it's it's 12 years old it, with only 4,000 views. If you do it out, it's, it's an average of one view per day, right? So there's not a lot of people searching for how to do ASTM E29 rounding. Um, you know, it, 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 there, if people <laughs> want to do this, they're not searching for it, or at least they're not finding my video uh, for it with all those views. All right, so what I did here, the, this test, and I recreated the data set, uh, so these numbers are a little bit different than the video, is I have a million numbers in column B, and those million numbers always have one digit after the decimal place, and I have a total up here of, of those numbers, 54, 994, 922. And then I did the typical Excel round, equal round to zero decimals, which is doing what we were taught in school, the 0.5 rounds up and 0.4 rounds down. And surprisingly, over the course of a million numbers, the total of that um, is almost $50,000, right? And it's, it's not 1%. Difference. Yeah, right, it's not 1%, it's, it's nine hundredths of a percent, right? So it's some fractional number, but if you have enough data, uh, it actually, it actually you know, comes out. And then over here, uh, is the formula that I used, uh, this mod formula, to do the banker's rounding, the um, 
for this guy, right? So that was the point of that video back in 2009. And it's surprising that when you use the banker's rounding, that skew, that upward skew goes away. It actually ended up being a little bit less than the original number. And instead of nine hundredths of a percent, it's all the way out here at, what is that, hundreds, thousands? It, it's a really small number, right? Small number. So in theory, yeah. in this case, in this particular case, it's better. And the fascinating thing about this whole thing, I don't know why I thought to do this back in 2009, is I wrote a little VBA function, VBA round, that's using the round function in VBA, and it's doing bankers rounding automatically, right? So for anyone who's been running VBA and using the round function in VBA, we've already been getting uh, this, this um, bankers rounding. Uh, and in this, in this case right here, it actually looks like it's a better way to round, except for no one would expect it. I took that data set and I ran it through Power Query, and Power Query is doing bankers rounding again. And that's not doing any adjusting of the M. It's just going into Power Query, the transform, clicking round and saying, I want to round the you know, zero decimal places. Um, so I think that's surprising if people don't know what bankers rounding is and uh, the fact that we're, we're getting that. Yeah, so uh, when you call it like that, bankers rounding gives it a lot, uh, gives it all the sense it needs. So if you think uh, on a situation where you are paying out money and you do thousands or millions of transactions and you always round up by default, you end up losing money. So you don't want uh, to offset that a little bit. If you do this uh, rounding to the nearest even number and that will make you, okay, sometimes when it's right in the middle, sometimes I go up, sometimes I go down. And in the end, it uh, um, makes the that bias that that difference smaller, and I'm not I, I don't get as many uh, loss as much loss as I would have if I'm rounding always up. Uh, but there are other situations where you may not want to do this kind of rounding. Um, for example, when I was a teacher and I was grading students, the rule uh, in, in our system back there in Portugal, uh, we grade uh, high school students from 1 to 20. And after, at the end of the year, we grab a different uh, a set of different grades they have in different assignments. Maybe there is an exam as well. And there's a weighted average that we calculate. And then we have to round if it, if it gives us a decimal number. And the rule is always, if it goes to the middle, 0.5 rounds up. I don't want to be rounding some students up. And some students <laughs> right, <down>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depending if their grade is closest to even or odd. Yeah. higher or smaller, in that, even number. In that case, it makes no sense at all to round towards even. Yeah. They should all be consistent. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so now you're, you are, I'm a Power Query rookie. I can, I can spell Power Query and I can entertain people for five <laughs> minutes. Can you show us how in Power Query we can control this and actually have it to round the same way that Excel rounds. Can, is there a way to solve this? Yes. There's a, here's a set of, of um, numbers. If we go to data uh, from table slash range, and so if I add a new column, so here in the add column uh, tab, and go to rounding, I have these three options. Rounding up, rounding down, and round dot 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 so i'm guessing i want this one and i am then asked how many decimal places i want to put there uh, and i say two okay and this is what i get so we can mm. maybe now close and load to table in an existing sheet maybe here and we can see 445 in Excel rounds to 45 and 0.45 and here to 0.45. Yeah, look at that. And then, for example, 515 here rounds up. So in this one rounds up and that one rounds down. Okay, so what can we do in Power Query to get it to be just like Excel? Is there a way to do that? Yes, uh, what we can do is to come here to the formula bar and after the decimal places we want to put a comma 
and then we discover that there's a rounding mode optional parameter that we can use. Wait a second, that wasn't in the user interface. In the round dialog, there was no advanced options that offered rounding mode. How? Not at how all. How would anyone no, discover so, that? Uh, I, uh, you have to find Ken Pulse's blog post. I think that's the only option you have at the Or now available. they can watch this video. So, or right, after yeah. watching this right. video. So we are just trying help, uh, trying to help out Ken Pulse a little bit with spreading the right. word uh, because uh, it, it's like you say, the user interface does not give us any indication that there is, first, that there is an optional parameter Second, it doesn't alert the user about what the default mode is. So I'm guessing, that without knowing what the rounding mode options are, if I were just a user coming along here trying to do this, I would type uh, round the right way. Is that, is, is that the parameter we put in? <laughs> So if you start oh, typing it, if you okay, have, it's not that one. <laughs> if you if you have um, Microsoft 365, you will have these IntelliSense, because otherwise you don't even get that. If you are using, uh, let's say, Excel 2016, you you will you would need to look into the documentation <laughs> or some kind of book that explains you this. Good luck with because, that. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't be aware. So if you start typing rounding mode, you can go rounding mode dot, and then you have these uh, modes up, down, right. towards zero, away from zero, and the two even is the banker's mode. And that's the default. What a weird default. And that's the default. Okay. And that is not, that is not um, explained anywhere. So if you want to do the Excel, uh, round formula, uh, round function uh, way, you would have to use that one away from zero. Editing the, editing your formula like that, now 445 rounds to 45. That, wow, so, that is not obvious or intuitive or discoverable right, at all. No, not at no. all. Okay. The function when we the function that is generated for us uh, in the M code when we just choose round is the number dot round function. If we come here to the documentation, it does not help us at all either. It says there's an optional rounding mode parameter specifies rounding direction when there is a tie between possible numbers to round to. Okay. See rounding mode dot type. There's no rounding mode dot type here. <laughs> of course. I look into the library. Okay. We want to look at the different rounding modes. Right. So we have up, down, away from zero, towards zero, and to even. And so the away from zero uh, is certainly they explain the one it that there. matches Excel. <laughs> no, yeah. they don't. There's no explanation at all. And then we go there and there's... So on the previous uh, article, did they mention that they default to banker's rounding or this... No. They don't even they don't even tell you okay so there we are we're getting what they're calling bankers rounding by default and no indication from microsoft that's happening and you would just have to be an eagle-eyed person who noticed that what you're getting from excel and what you're getting from power query doesn't match exactly. right wow. if we look at all the different options we have and then comparing the results with what we get in excel all the columns get some differences. The only one that does not get uh, give us any difference. So the only one that gives us a complete match with what we get in Excel is when we use away from zero. So that's the, the mode that matches Excel. You know, my problem with that is I'm never gonna remember away from zero. I'm gonna have to come back to this video every time I wanna remember that it's away from zero. And that's why we are doing this the same way. Like I said, I went to Ken's blog post. What is that again that I right. need to use? It, it's not obvious. <laughs> if they simply called it the rounding mode of the right way or the way Excel does it, yeah. just make it be the, the default. And the other, the other function I was telling you about is number dot around, uh, round away from zero. <laughs> okay. No, no. So that, that one is rounding away from zero. That's, that's what it does. So it's not matching that one. By default, they're doing the banker's rounding, uh, which most people probably are not expecting it to do. It's not matching what Excel is doing. And I'm not sure that I have a huge problem with that because the, you know, Excel didn't write this. This was written at Lotus or VisiCalc and Excel just had to follow along. 
Um, and there's been cases before, like the the January or February 29th, 1900 problem. The, the Power Query people said, well, we're not going to replicate that just because Lotus made that error 25 years ago. And you can sell that in VBA. The round function is using the banker's rounding. So I can see lots of reasons why they might choose banker's rounding. But boy, they should really tell people, right? I mean, it should be very explicit. Yes. That this isn't matching Excel. And, um, you know, we think it's better than Excel. Yes, uh, I, 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 I've been thinking about it. Maybe they thought uh, or they assumed that Power Query will be used mostly to deal with business data. And then someone decided that doing the uh, banker's rounding was the best rounding to apply. But I mean, that's just one situation, like we mentioned. There's so many other situations where we need to think about uh, which rounding method to apply. And, uh, and people, we, we think, I think that most people will just think of rounding as rounding up when you are in the middle in between two integer yeah, numbers. Yeah, that's, that's right. Now, just uh, a caveat here. So I went back and watched my video from 2009. And I realized that in that data set, the only choices after the decimal point, there were only 10. It was either 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And in real life, numbers aren't like that, right? They're going to have two or three or four decimal places. So I reran those million calculations. And it's, it's funny, the error or the skew becomes much smaller if you have real life data with two or three or four decimal places, right? It, it's only the contrived situation that I had in that video of a million numbers that all end in 0 0.1 with a single decimal place. So the problem that I described back in 2009 really isn't even as much of a problem. All right, I'll see you. The, the real problem that you had was you knew that this, this rounding was wrong, but then another problem cropped up uh, with your data. So two problems happening. What, just briefly, what, what was the issue there? So what triggered all this conversation was a situation where I already knew that there were different rounding modes and I already knew that I needed to apply uh, the away from zero rounding mode, not, is it? Yes, away right. from zero rounding mode. You see, I, I, I still really <laughs> have to think about it to, to be sure what to apply. Anyways, I already knew that. And I went to my M code and applied that extra parameter and loaded the data. And then I took a brief look at um, the results and some of them were not correct. I mean, they were not matching the expected results. And when you mentioned that to the list, who who was the first person to pounce on it and know what the problem was? John Carell. He is an expert in, in VBA, knows a lot of stuff in VBA, XML code and all that. And he thought of looking into the XML code and check the values that are stored in that code. And so what happens is that what you type in a cell in Excel may not be exactly what is stored uh, in the XML file. And when you are loading the data from that Excel file from a separate Excel file using Power Query, Power Query will be looking uh, into, will be extracting what is in the XML code and not what's in the cells. Okay. Good. Let me... And Let me jump in. So yeah, John Carroll, <laughs> he helped me out two years ago when I had one of the one of the people who watched my videos said, hey, this is calculating incorrectly. And John Carroll looked in the XML and discovered that Excel is storing 17 digits of precision. And since the beginning of time, the rule is that Excel only deals with 15 digits of precision. Right? And the fact that they started storing 17, that's that, you know, well, Maybe it's better, right? As long as they only use the first 15. But this is the third time now in the wild that I've discovered that some functions are using all 17, which is against the rules. And it's causing a, an incorrect calculation, all right? So congratulations. I've had two other people before you run into this. And that doesn't mean that there are only three people have run into this 17 digit problem. There's probably thousands of people that are, that are just don't realize that they're getting wrong calculations. We, we can talk about this maybe another opportunity, but what's happening is that even if your number has a finite number of decimal places, for example, uh, I can't remember the exact value that I was uh, that I had in that situation, but if you have 1.223, 
when you look what Excel stores in the XML code, maybe 1.223000000 up to 17 digits, and then the last one will one, be a one. Right. And that. Or it may decide to be just one instead of doing this rounding up, may decide to do this rounding right. down, and who knows why. And then Power Query is using. It's not showing us that. So if you look at the Power Query editor, you will see what you had in Power in Excel. But then if you click in each one of the cells below in the bar, below at the bottom in Power Query editor, you will see the XML value that Power Query is really using instead of what we thought was the truth. Okay. <laughs> the and, true and you discovered that if it's in the file, it's correct. But if you're pulling the data from a closed external file, then it's going to use that extra digit. The, the illegal digits. Yeah, so my I, I haven't done a lot of testing, but from what I've tried so far, what it seems is if you are uh, if you your query is in the same file where your data is, it will you won't have any problems. Apparently, that's what I've been test uh, what the the results of my uh, testing so far. But if you are pulling out the data from an Excel file from another external file, you will you will be working with the data stored in the XML okay. code. Okay, so I'm going to put a link to the video where I talk about this 15 versus 17 digits of precision. The Excel team is well aware of this. They know it's a problem. To me, it's a violation of the prime directive. I mean, they, they have a flag there in their office that says recalc or die. This is a clear case where they are not recalcing. And I don't know why the whole world isn't freaking out, but here we are. All right. So. Yeah. Uh, the, the moral for today is if you're using Power Query, the round function that you're getting by default isn't the same thing that we're getting in Excel. And if your numbers really matter, if that precision matters, there's a great workaround, but it sure is not obvious and it's not very well documented. Yes. And if you are extracting Excel data from other files and precision is really important for the calculations that you are doing, you also need to be aware that you may be working with slightly different numbers than your actual numbers. And I think in my other video, I actually suggested just rounding to 14 digits. Take everything in, bring, round it, you yourself round to 14 digits, which will, you know, like do that first step, uh, which is what Excel should be doing. They should be rounding to 15 digits of precision. It's not yeah. a step we should have to take. All right. Well, no. That's good. Well, I, Celia, thanks for your time today. All right. Uh, this is a, a fascinating. My pleasure. When I say this is a fascinating topic, it shows what nerds we are, right? That this is a fascinating <laughs> topic. But I really think that people need to know um, that. No, it is, it is, it is fasc fascinating as much as it is, uh, it, it, it should concern everyone using Excel because you may be doing something wrong with your data that you are not aware of. So that's the whole purpose of this video, I guess. All right, now I'm gonna put you on the spot here. I didn't I didn't ask you to prepare for this. At the end of all, all my videos, I try and sell something, right? Do you have anything you wanna promote? You got any courses coming up or uh, that's? I, I will be preparing a course shortly about automation in Excel, but if you want to be aware of that, uh, just uh, feel free to follow my YouTube channel, Celia Alves Solve Excel. And uh, I'm, Every week, I have a long class live there that you can particip participate in, and then I, I leave it, leave the recording there available. And uh, then I have shorter videos that are extracted from those long wow. classes. Wow. So classes. a free class yeah. every week? Free class? Uh, yeah, free class every awesome. week, uh, just tackling some kind of Excel problem. I'm mostly focusing on... Uh, report excel reporting automation so anything that can help people uh saving time with their tasks in excel either with power query with vba or just excel functions or other features um so that's my focus there All right. and uh, so if you follow that you will be aware you will be aware when i come up with the course that perfect I'm so click and thank you for the opportunity to, just for <laughs> to people watching this that. click that eye in the top right hand corner and you can uh, subscribe the Celia's channel, yeah, absolutely, you. and then uh, yes, uh, and uh, and subscribe to I don't know if you are watching and not subscribed yet to Bill's video, please go there. It's it was one of my first the first the very first channels I found about uh, Excel. Uh, it's just a surprise and an honor to me today that I'm 
participating in one of your videos, Bill, because you, a lot of my work in Excel started in your channel. Oh, thanks, so Celia. That's thank you for great. that. Yeah, that's, that's great. All right, normally, I, so Celia, I just had a new book that came out last week, the Mr. Excel 2021, and that's the book I've been pitching. But this topic, this ASTM E29 running, isn't in that book. It's in a book that I wrote long ago called Power Excel with Mr. Excel, the 2019 edition. Click the I in the top right-hand corner for that. Well, Siri, I want to thank you for your time, and I want to thank everyone for stopping by. Please, down below the video, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Feel free to post any questions or comments down in the YouTube comments below. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel. Tips and tricks, get your spreadsheet fixed at MrExcel.com.